In my last video, I showed you how to create this interesting effect here inside Figma where we have a pattern and kind of a blurry shape in the background. I had enough people say they were interested in seeing how to build this out in Generate Blocks, so that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna to be starting totally from scratch and I promise you this is really simple to do. So if you're ready to see how it's done, then stick around and let's get started. So here in this demo install, I just have Generate Blocks and Generate Blocks Pro installed. These are the release candidate one for the 2.0 version. That's the newest one available at the time of me recording this. We have Generate Press Premium installed and SVG support just so I can upload some different SVGs here. So we'll go in here into our all pages. I've set up a new page, but it's completely blank at this point. So we're gonna be starting from scratch. We're gonna do that by adding a container with an inner container. I'm gonna go back to this outer container here. We wanna have quite a bit of padding around it just so we can really see this effect. Depending on your design, you might need less or more, of course. Now, inside that container, we're gonna have our card. So I'll go ahead and add this first one in here. I'm not gonna worry about adding classes to everything. We get these default classes from Generate Blocks anyways, and this isn't a real project. If it were a real project, obviously I'd wanna add my own classes to it. So we'll go in here and add some padding. I'm gonna do 32 pixels all the way around. We also wanna to go to our backgrounds and give this a darker background color. We'll go in here to our borders. I'm gonna add a one pixel border and we'll just pick a lighter color here from my color palette. And then we'll make sure to put that border radius we had just like inside the Figma drawing. Now inside of this, we're gonna be adding our SVG image. I did already upload that to the media library here. So we'll go ahead and add that in there. Underneath that, we have a pretty big gap and then our text content. So I'm gonna wrap that text content in a container, which is gonna help us align things later. And inside there, we'll do a heading and we'll do some text underneath that. Now, a little bit too much gap in this case, so I'm just gonna go ahead and bring that down to maybe four pixels and tighten those up a bit. On this text here, I do wanna use a generate blocks text block. And I'm just gonna change this text color just so it matches a little bit better to what we had in our Figma drawing. Okay, so now we need to worry about getting that big gap in between the icon and the headline. To do that, I'm gonna go back here to our container. I'm gonna change this layout to flex. We'll change the flex layout to column, which will stack these back on top of each other. We'll turn our alignment to start. And then the justify content, we're gonna do space between. Now we need to do to add that gap is go in here into our sizing and we're gonna give this a minimum height of something like 400 pixels. I'll just make sure that this card's never shorter than the 400 pixels and we have a bigger gap in between here. Now, in our example, we did have three of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this two more times. And we're gonna go back to our inner container and change this to display grid. So here under layout, I'm gonna go to display and we're gonna change this to grid. In our grid layout, I'm gonna change this to repeat. We'll do auto fit, comma, min, max. 300 pixels comma one FR. And that'll just make sure we have a nice responsive grid here. Here it's gonna fit three across, but of course if we go into our responsive settings, here it's only two and here it's one. This little min max function does a good job of just creating some simple grid layouts. Now I do wanna put some space in between that, so we'll just add 16 pixels of gap. And I think we have everything we need just to get that part started. So again, we need to be thinking about this in terms of that 3D space on the Z axis, making sure that we're aligning things properly. So I'm gonna go to our container here and under the more dropdown, I'm gonna click on the new button and we're gonna start by adding a before pseudo element. This is gonna be what's placed in the very back here. So we'll go ahead and click on before and then click create. Now, anytime you're using a pseudo element, it does have to have something in the content field. If you just do two tick marks like that, it will be blank content, which is gonna be fine for this purposes. We also wanna go ahead and set this position to absolute. And I'm gonna set an inset of zero, which will just make sure this pseudo element takes up the entire space here. Just to demonstrate that, if I went in here and just gave it a green background, you can see it's filling up our entire section. But of course we don't want a background color. What we actually want is that blob we set up inside of Figma. So I'm gonna go in here inside the images. I'm gonna select an image. We'll go to upload files and I'll grab this blob off of my downloads folder and hit select. Now it automatically sets this to the size of cover. I'm gonna change this right now to auto, which is just gonna bring it in at the size it was saved out in Figma. And that will be a good starting place for us at least. Now you'll notice that my blob doesn't have any of the blur or opacity that we did inside of Figma. I decided to just export that as a solid shape here and then we could do those effects here inside Generate Blocks. So to do that, I'm gonna scroll down here to the effects panel. 
Under filter, we'll automatically get blur here, and we'll go something like maybe 180 pixels of blur just to really blur that out in the background. Go ahead and click the check mark, and then under opacity, we're gonna to wanna to bring this down to something like 40% is what we had inside of our Figma file. Now we just need to worry about positioning this. We can use this here to kind of drag this where we want it. You're gonna to have to adjust this on different breakpoints, but right now I'm just trying to get this effect on the screen, so I think this is close enough for our purposes. So now we have that before element taken care of and we need to do our pattern that's gonna go on top of it. So for that, I'm gonna go into the more, I'm gonna click new, and this time we're gonna use our after pseudo element. Just like before, we need to go ahead and put our two tick marks in the content there. We'll go into our position and we'll change this to absolute and set our inset to zero. So now it's taking up the full size here. Now for this one, we again wanna add that background. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the plus button go to select, and I'm gonna upload that pattern, which I just exported directly out of Figma as an SVG. So go ahead and hit select, and now we can see our pattern is overlaying on top of that blurry pseudo element behind it. Now, the only thing we need to worry about are these cards, which are actually behind our pattern since our pattern is that after pseudo element. So I'm just gonna to go to our grid here, and if we go up to the top and search for Z index, we can go ahead and change this to something like two or three, which should just bring it right above all that stuff. We'll go ahead and save this and go take a look on the front end. And we can see this is working now. It's obviously rendering a little bit different on the front end. When you're in the editor, it actually sets these containers to position relative, but it doesn't actually output that on the front end. And since this blob is not being contained by a parent that has position relative, it's just filtering down all the way to the HTML element, which is just putting it at the bottom of our screen here. That's a pretty easy fix. If we just go back to our outer container, the section that we created here, and back in here, we'll just search for position and we'll change this position to relative. Now, we won't see any change on this back end here because it's kind of already previewing that as position relative anyways, but if we hit save on this and go to the front end and refresh, we'll see it's now positioned more like it was inside the editor. Now, I do think this blurry element is a little bit too big here inside the browser, so I'm gonna go back to this container, and if we go in here to more, we can get that before pseudo element, which was our blob shape, and we'll go in here and edit this. Right now, the size is set to auto, but if you click these three dots and hit enter custom value, we could do something like 400 pixels, which will make it quite a bit smaller. We'll save that and preview it on the front end, and that looks a whole lot closer to what we had before. Now you can see this pattern is actually stopping at the end of my section, and that's because it's being contained to that actual section here. What I did on the Barfly site, if we go back and visit that again, these are pseudo elements, just like I showed you inside this tutorial, except I didn't attach them to a specific section. I attached them to the body of the website, so they appear across all pages in the same position. So it depends on your use case how you might wanna do this, but I thought it would just make more sense in this demo to show you how it might work inside of a single section. Now, the only thing we can't fully replicate here inside Generate Blocks is that background blur I put on the cards inside of Figma. It just takes one little line of CSS, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that as it's not too complicated. So I'm gonna grab all three of our cards here. We're gonna search for our background color. I'm gonna go ahead and select that background color and I'm gonna drop the opacity down to something maybe like 60%. You're obviously gonna to have to play with this number. I might be going a little bit too low here, but I just wanna make sure that we can see it pretty well in this demo. In fact, even at 60%, I know I can see it here on my screen, but I can imagine that's gonna be harder once we're on a screen share. So I'm gonna back that down to maybe something like 40% for the time being. And now you should be able to see that blur is showing through even though the card is a little bit darker. Now, like I said before, you're probably gonna be using real classes on all these. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab the class that Generate Blocks gave us and go ahead and copy that element. So we'll go ahead and save this change. We'll go over to the front end and jump in the customizer and into additional CSS so we can write our little bit of CSS for this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in here just to make it easier for you to see and make sure you can kind of see that background color poking through there. And then we'll paste in our selector and open our curly brackets. To give that background blur effect, what we do is backdrop hyphen filter. Then we do blur and we put in our value. I'm gonna start out with maybe five pixels. And you can see as soon as I did that, it's kind of blurred that background behind it. Now again, I know this is hard to see on a screen share, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring this opacity way down to maybe something like 15%, 14%, just so it's easy for you to see on the screen share. 
And we'll go ahead and refresh it here in the customizer. And you can see we have that kind of blur happening in the background here. Now, if I put that down to zero, we can perfectly see those lines. But as we increase this, things just get a little bit more and more blurry. Something like four pixels looks pretty good here. And that just gives it that kind of glass morphism, somewhat opaque effect. All it takes is this one single line of CSS, so it's not too tricky to do. It's just not something that I could find as a setting inside of Generate Blocks. If you haven't used pseudo elements a whole lot before, I know it can be a little bit to wrap your mind around, but they are actually extremely useful. And like I said in the previous video, you're really not limited to any number of patterns or shapes to combine different things and come up with different effects. This looks completely different in light mode than it does in dark mode, so I'd really love to see what kinds of things you come up with as you experiment with different layouts using this. If you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up, and if you wanna make sure to catch the next one, then hit subscribe, and we'll see you then.